Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm S.M. Cornthwaite, the author of Jack the Ripper, the Man Behind the Blade, as well as the Hollow Screams book series. Today I am going to be going over two books that I have really come to, for lack of a better word, love. Uh, that is The Whispering Dead and The Ravenous Dead by Darcy Coates. So stay tuned. First things first, today I am drinking a Blake's Hard Cider. Uh, this video is not sponsored by the company, but I really love their drinks. Uh, this is Apple Lantern uh, Roasted Pumpkin Hard Cider. Fire Tux has it. Uh, I'm not sure if any other uh, liquor stores that have it, but very delicious drink. So anyway, I've been a Darcy Coates fan since the end of summer. Uh, I was walking through uh, Barnes & Noble and looking for a, a ghost story to get into. In order to find inspiration for my own writing, I came across uh, the horror aisle. Stephen King was first, and then I came across Darcy Coates. Uh, I had never heard anything about her. I didn't know at the time that she was a USA Today bestselling author. The title, which was The Haunting of Ashburn House, had just caught my eye, and I bought it and decided to give it a try. I read it. it took me, since I read it in parts, it took me about two or three days. I really enjoyed it. My wife saw how much I was enjoying it, so she downloaded it on Kindle, uh, because we have Kindle Unlimited, so she went ahead and downloaded it, read it. She enjoyed it too. And because I've been promoting Darcy Coates books for so much since I began reading them, through my Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Uh, a couple of my friends have started reading her books as well and are really enjoying them. Currently, I've listened to, I wanna say I've listened to about six of her audiobooks. I still have to get them on in regular paperback, but I have the majority of her paperback books. My wife ordered me The Whispering Dead for my birthday, and then I ordered The Ravenous Dead as soon as it was released, and I started reading I started reading The Whispering Dead yesterday because I had just finished The Fullcroft Ghosts and decided to start reading this. Uh, started it yesterday morning right before classes uh, because I am in school. I'm going to school for psychology and I read it in between classes, finished it last night. Uh, I fell in love with it immediately. Just so you guys know, I'll go ahead and read the uh, blurb on the back. She hears them whispering, homeless hunted and desperate to escape a bitter storm, Kira takes refuge in an abandoned groundskeeper's cottage. Tucked away at the edge of a cemetery, it's surrounded on all sides by gravestones, some recent, some hundreds of years old, all suffering from neglect. And in the darkness, she can hear the unquiet dead whispering. The cemetery is alive with faint spectral shapes, led by a woman who died before her time. And Kira, the only person who can see her, has become her new target. Determined to help put the ghost to rest, Kira digs in the spirit's past life with the help of an unlikely of unlikely new friends and discovers a history of deception, ill-fitted love, and murder. But the past is not as simple as it seems, and Kira's time is running out. Tangled in, da in a dangerous web, she has to find a way to free the spirit, even if it means offering her own life in return. Now, I read this in a day. Normally it takes me a little bit longer to read books just because I'm so busy with school and school work and family stuff. These books have just, there's something about them that really grabs me and sucks me in. I've been consumed by them over the past 48 hours. The story of Kira and her lost memories really attracts me. It's a mystery, you know, uh, for those of you who don't know, and it's revealed at the very beginning of the book. Uh, Kira is a girl, very skinny. Uh, she looks like she hasn't eaten uh, very well in quite some time. She's on the run from this, from these men in like skull masks or something like that. And she has no memory of who she is. All she knows is her name and that she's being hunted. And she has this picture in her uh, pocket of three scientists with 
a phrase written on the back that says, don't trust the men with flaky skin. And that's all we know about her until she starts to discover that she's got these abilities that she can see the dead, but it's not constant. She's got to pull on a muscle between behind her eyes in order to be able to see the dead. And they can't talk to her. They can only communicate by nodding their heads, uh, shaking their heads, stuff like that, but they can't speak. Uh, she can speak to them, but they can't speak to her. And it's really a horror mystery. You know, it takes you on a journey. And from the beginning, when I started reading this, uh, the characters seemed familiar to me. Uh, not that they had come up in any of uh, Darcy Coe's books before, but they felt really familiar to me. And then I began picturing them as actors in some of my favorite movies and TV shows. The character of Adage, which uh, he's a reverend, uh, minister, uh, whatever you want to call it, of this church in this small town called Blighty. And it looks over the parish and the cemetery and everything else. And the feeling I got from him was he reminded me a great deal of Patrick Stewart. Uh, maybe not in the way she describes him, but the way he talks. Uh, every single sentence he utters, I just immediately, it clicked in my mind that his voice sounded like Patrick Stewart's. He's got that kind of a presence about him. He's very gentle, very mild-mannered, very loving, very caring, like a grandfatherly figure. And so I'm, I'm referring to old Patrick Stewart, not, not early 90s or 80s Patrick Stewart, but present-day Patrick Stewart. He's very, he's very understanding, and he will give anyone the shirt off of his back if, if it meant helping. Kira immediately comes... Uh, she meets this girl named Zoe, who's very outspoken, very... She's conspiratory. You know, she loves conspiracies. She's obsessed by them. She's very dramatic. And the... Just reading her, her dialogue, picturing her in my mind, I pictured Mary Wiseman from Star Trek Discovery. She played Ensign Tilly. Or she plays Ensign Tilly. And yes, Darcy Coates gives her dark hair, stuff like that. Mary Wiseman has red hair. But that, that could be taken care of with hair dye, you know. The feeling I get from reading her, Zoe is Mary Wiseman. Uh, another character that pops up, he's spoken about, but he doesn't really appear really until uh, the second book. And that's Dr. Kelsey. He doesn't make a big appearance, but he comes in later in the story. And immediately, as I was reading his, reading his dialogue, the image that came to mind was Christian Clemenson. He played hands on Boston Legal. Uh, you know, the character who's he's autistic. He's constantly wiping his hands. Uh, he's, he's constantly trying to get the partnership. But because of his autism, because of his sweaty hands and everything, he's never able to get a partnership. And he ends up holding the uh, law firm hostage. That is, the, that, that is who I picture when I think of Dr. Kelsey. The other characters like Mason and Kira, those I haven't really, I can see them in my mind but they don't really fit with anyone that uh, I've seen so far in television or movies. I understand that Darcy Coates, she's Australian, so there's a lot of, I'm sure that in her books, she doesn't really state it, but it sounds like her books take place in Australia or perhaps even the UK. Now, when it comes to Kira, I get the impression that she's she almost seems American. Uh, Zoe, you could tell by her speech patterns and everything, she's Australian. She constantly says, oi, and stuff like that. She's either Australian or 
she's you know i think it's the southern part of britain the lower class british that speak like that the oi and stuff like that so she's either australian or british when it comes to mason he really sounds british in my mind the entire story takes place in the town of Blythe, aside from a small part in uh, the ravenous dead which takes place in a neighboring city that's uh like six hours away i think they say in the book called clemenston or something like that these books are like a they're gothic horror mystery adventure you think it's going to go one way and then it goes another and there's a lot of twists and turns in Darcy Coates books. Uh, some of her earlier stuff, the Haunting series, you knew what was going to happen because she had like a pattern. She would build the story and then you would get the false revelation and then action and then the true revelation. And this does have some of that, but it's not as obvious as in the Haunting series. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I, I actually like that. Now, The Ravenous Dead reading this i started it this morning or no i started it last night once i finished this one because i couldn't stop reading so i started this last night finished it today and as i was reading it i really fell in love with the characters kira zoe mason uh, adage I, I really fell in love with them and there's a character in here harry he doesn't play a big role he does play a role nonetheless and he's important to the story. Now this book, I wasn't as surprised with how it turned out as I was with this one. This twist, you really have to pay attention. If you pay attention, you won't be surprised until the very end. A lot of the stuff in this is, it's obvious. I, I don't wanna to give too much away because this is a very new book. It just released on March 19th, I wanna say. So many people may not have read it yet. But the story builds like a mystery for you to figure out. Everything is there for you to figure it out. But at the same time, the very end, the lap, the final revelation, it's something that takes you by surprise and you don't realize it until right before, right as it's unfolding. Like I said, I really fell in love with these books. I hope Darcy Coates continues the series beyond book three, which isn't due out until next year, The Twisted Dead. I'm going to have to pre-order it uh, if it becomes available for pre-order because I am just in love with these characters. I have never felt this way about a book or a series of books before or characters in a book, uh, even in my own books. I've never fallen so completely in love with characters or a story before. I want to see it continue. In fact, reading these, these would make for a great television series an ongoing television series uh, the whispering dead could be an entire season by itself the ravenous dead could be another season you know that's how great it is and i'm really looking forward to see there's a cat in here called daisy she's very suspicious the author hints makes hints towards what she could possibly be i think she's a familiar uh, those of you who aren't familiar with familiars, they are animals who, they're kind of like guardians of witches. And she doesn't come out and say that, but that's the feeling I'm getting from Daisy the cat. I think she's a familiar. Uh, I think she's connected to uh, Kira, and I, I think their lives are locked together. The end of The Ravenous Dead, uh, I was laughing through the last couple chapters uh, during some of the uh, final scenes. I even felt my heart wrench a couple times uh, during one scene in particular that really kind of, it grabbed me, you know, it, it touched on my emotions. So I, I really love these books. I hope Darcy Coates continues them past book three. I really want to see an entire series done up of these. I, I think Kira's got a lot more stories, a lot more adventures than just the next one. And I would really like to see these get turned into a TV series. That's how much I really enjoyed them. And I've never said that about books before. I've read a lot in the past year. I I actually accredit Darcy Coates for uh, getting me back into reading. I've never really been a big reader. I would read occasionally, but since school, 
since I left high school, I barely read through my 20s. Through my late, mid to late 30s, I started reading John Douglas books, getting into true crime and stuff. But it was Darcy Coates that really got me, really built my love for reading. You know, I think I read between physical books, uh, ebooks, and audio books. I think I consumed around a hundred books last year. Already this year, I'm at, I want to say 30, and we aren't even halfway through the year yet. It's all thanks to Darcy Coates. I started reading her books back in late summer, early fall, I want to say, and already I've built up quite a collection. Yeah, I just, I hope you guys consider giving these books a try. Uh, the Whispering Dead and The Ravenous Dead. And then next year, uh, The Twisted Dead is coming out. I can't wait for it. I, I, I just, I love this series and I want to see it continue. If you guys have read these books, let me know in the comments below what you think. And yeah, I mean, if you haven't read them, I highly suggest you go out and give them a try. Uh, they are on, I want to say they're on Audible. I want to say they are on Kindle. All of Darcy Coates' books, I believe, are available on Kindle Unlimited. They are, the majority of them are also available through Audible. I get a lot of her books either from Barnes & Noble or Amazon myself. Give them a try. Give them a read. I promise you, you won't regret it. I've been S.M. Cornthwaite, and this has been a book review. Take care, readers.